I warmly welcome you all to Sri Lanka and to the 37th session of the Regional Conference for Asia and Pacific of the UN Food and Agricultural Organization. The FAO has a significant role in Asia-Pacific region in promoting food security, transforming agri-food systems for sustainable production, building sustainable and resilient agri-food systems, which has relevance to the SGDs. Now, as far as Sri Lanka is concerned, we would go beyond it. It's also going to play a major role in the transformation of our economy. Let me explain in brief what we plan to do. You have come here and we are hosting this conference at a time when Sri Lanka is emerging for an economic crisis. A crisis emanating from the fact that we declared self bankrupt in 2022. We didn't have fertilizer for cultivation. There was a shortage of food. There was a shortage of fuel and basically a shortage of foreign exchange. It's from this that we have come up to this level. And very soon we will be signing our final agreements with the uh, committee of overseas uh, creditors at the Paris Club, and we will no longer be a bankrupt economy, but that's not enough. In coming to this position in such a short time, I must say agriculture played an important role. As I looked at the economy, where what were the low-hanging fruits, where could we first get our results? The first was agriculture. The second was tourism. It's a question of how do we go. Fortunately, we had assistance that was provided for us by USAID in giving us the fertilizer. We were able to access fertilizer on our own. That made a difference. By 2023, April, when the main cultivation season came, we were out of the woods. We had a good season and I knew from there onwards we could go ahead. So that was first. And then throughout the year, tourism started picking up. So agriculture did play a role. Now what would I have done if there was no agriculture? If there was no food production? That's a big question. And again this year, throughout the last year, we were fortunate. And this year again, we'll have a good crop for this season in April. And we'll go on to the second crop towards the end of the year. Agriculture did play, and remember in all our countries, agriculture has an important role, and agriculture can play a role in ensuring a country develops. So if you are ever in a crisis, first go for agriculture. That's what I could recommend to all of you. The second is, why did we get there to this problem? One major issue was the balance of trade was never in our favor, and we've been taking a fair amount of foreign loans which we are not able to service. So secondly, all the agreements means we get a much longer time to service our loans, to repay them. But there's a catch in it. If we don't have a favorable balance of trade, this will continue again. In the next 10 years, we'll have the same issue. So we want to transform our economy and ensure that the balance of trade is favorable to us. We have three principles in transforming economy. It has to be a highly competitive economy. It can't go on domestic protection. Secondly, it has to be a green economy. And third, it has to be a digital economy. So looking at that, you talk of green economy. How does your green economy develop? Through agriculture. So you go into agriculture. You modernize it. You make it competitive, and you go ahead. Sri Lanka has a history of 2,000 years of agricultural exports. First, uh, exporting grains, rice, and other grains. For that, we are backed up by the hydraulic civilization. In fact, in that civilization, actually the money did not come from land. In any feudal society, land meant money. The richest of the lords 
and the monasteries didn't own land. They owned the reservoirs that sold the water. So anyone who owned land had to buy this. So that, that was the type of uh, economy we had at that time. And the collapse of that civilization, we came down to the wet zones and we are well known for Sri Lanka spices. When the British came in as price of spices were coming down, we got into the cultivation of tea, coconut and rubber. As far as high growns are concerned, still India and Sri Lanka are the best and we have a monopoly, which we have to develop. But we have also neglected agriculture. We broke up uh, large plantations in 1972, restricting land ownership to 50 acres. But we also, on the other hand, developed what was called the larger scheme, the Mahavali scheme, which opened up 100,000 of acres. That's where FA also came in to help us. But we could not go ahead and develop it further as a result of the war. Thereafter, we seemed to have neglected it. So we thought, we'll go in for this. We'll maximize and we'll become a country that's exporting food, food stuff, agriculture, and not merely crops, but we want to go in for value added. That is what, what we are looking at. A good example we have taken is from our friends in Thailand, which has now established a very good export economy in agriculture. So we are starting off. First is to reorganize the system and open it out to the private sector. There were many closed sectors, we have to open it out. Second, what are we looking at? We are looking at the most modern agriculture system to come into this country. We want that. And it will take us 10 years, 15 years, but 10 years is the target. We bring the most modern agriculture sector. But we have another issue. Young people are leaving the village. They will not take part in traditional agriculture. Bring in smart agriculture, you can keep them back. So that's one of the other issues that we are facing. So as we open up, first is that our agriculture ministry was divided into, uh, function was divided into three ministries. So now we brought it under one minister. He controls all and we'll be start restructuring. Firstly, is a good delivery service. How do we deliver a, the, a good service to the farmers? Our systems had really ceased to function partly because we had devolution and we had not done it properly. So there were competing interests of the central government and the provinces. Now we are rationalizing it. And the main centers of which we have about 300, think in the periphery area without the plantation crops, we turn that into agriculture modernization centers where all who are concerned, public and private will be there. We want to bring in the private sector working together with us with the government sector. That's the best way, that's what we agreed, and now we, we are getting the private sector with it. We have to look at new systems of uh, purchasing, we have to look at the new supply chain, cold stores, all of that is not available in Sri Lanka. You bring that in, and that certainly will make a big difference. One effort of privatizing is privatizing the uh, state-owned plantations. We are opening out land, uh, remaining land under the Mahavari scheme, will also give land which is available with the state and which has not been utilized. That's for anyone who would like to go in for modern agriculture. There's another privatization scheme we are bringing in, which is the largest privatization scheme we have. Since 1935, we have given land out to farmers. All this land has been given out on permits under the Land Development Ordinance. No one owns it. Now we are giving them freehold title. Nearly over one million plus farmers will get freehold title this year alone. So the land is yours. You are committed to the land and you develop it. So this is the biggest privatization I think we have done in Sri Lanka. We are giving them ownership and then we'll back them to modernize the agriculture. So this in brief is what we are going ahead immediately. Get the supply chains and then look at how are you going to add value. That brings me to the field of uh, animal husbandry, where our production, milk production is very low, about two liters per animal. Now we've changed it. As far as the state organized milk is concerned, we are going into an agreement where Amul will be controlling it. And what is the target? We will look at two million animals 
giving 10 liters a day. So from one we go to 10. That is 20 million they are alone. And uh, that is about 200,000 farmers. So that's one. Then uh, existing other companies are also stepping up. Nestle's, Fontara, amongst others. Then another Sri Lankan company, Ambavela Farms, they have sent production up to 28 litres per animal. That's uh, fairly high. So, but it means we'll have milk not only for the country's needs, but all for value addition, especially for confectioneries. We are looking at first the inland fisheries and then the agriculture, and then we'll go into the rest of the fisheries in the oceans. So this is roughly the plan we have. And we will go ahead, we will call in, we want to contribute to food security. And we, I have taken into mind, if you look at the population in 2050 when we are no longer there, there will be at least just from Iran to in, uh, Indonesia, the population will increase by about 500 to 600 million. And everyone will have a higher standard of living, high incomes. And look at Africa on the other side. So East and South Africa, there are going to be a big need for food. Together with this, we are also working on climate change. And Sri Lanka is committed to it. There are two proposals we have put forward. One is the tropical belt. Make the tropical belt a carbon sink, together with the Indian Ocean. Make private sector invest in your grasslands, in your forest. What is left over is where I think the loss and damage fund can come in and help you to invest. But that means the well over 50 to 60 to 70 percent of the lands will be in, uh, invested. We have to be practical. No one in uh, UK is going to give money to Mali, and no one in Finland will give money to Sri Lanka, but make it attractive. The second is to push this on. We will be establishing International Climate Change University, a stakeholder university on which we are working. Sri Lanka has already given the land. We are talking with the uh, Republic of Korea on starting the building, but there are many other stakeholders who will come in. So the International Climate Change Unit will train a lot of our officials in climate change. So these two, this is the contribution we are making. And finally, all the agricultural research stations in Sri Lanka will be brought under our agrotechnology university. So we'll be ready for that. So this is the plan we have, and I hope you have your ideas you can contribute to us where you think we are, there's a shortcoming or there's more that we can do. And uh, certainly, as I told the Director General, I'll be looking forward for help with the FAO when we transform agriculture. Thank you.